Overwatch League. I've done it again, guys. In fact, shout, shout is what self-indulgent, isn't it? It's self-indulgent to do it twice. Shall we? Yeah, go on then, we will. Let's do it. This was an interview uh, I did back in... 2017 October 2017 I did this while I was at E-League I remember this was one of the first things that we did where E-League were like who have we hired <laughs> right because E-League was bidding pitching for I think the uh, to do the Overwatch tournament that they did do and they were like listen if you get asked anything about Overwatch, we know what your views are, but, you know, like, just dial it down with seven. And I'm like, I ain't got sevens. <laughs> I only do tens. That's me. Like, I am a, 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 you know what I mean? The face is a one, but the brain is a ten. So, you know, I only do tens. I only say what the fuck I want. That's it. That's, like, again, another value to live by, right? Like, I ain't ever compromising that. Like, I worked too hard to fucking haul myself out of a shitty council estate where every day was drudgery to ever forfeit, you know, my voice again. So I told them, I said, I'm probably just going to say things that you won't like. And they were going, well, you know, we'll see anyway. We'll we'll review the footage. You know, we had like a PR dude who used to help me with some interviews and go over everything I said. Could go and make interviews disappear if I gave an answer or I was wrong or tipped something off I shouldn't have said, you know. So anyway, I got asked, this is on uh, Blitz Esports, and I got asked about the Overwatch League while we were doing E-League. This was the great time of the Esports Accelerant. You know, like, we were all, we're in stadiums, we're on TV, you know, everybody's doing franchise leagues, Every esports is big, it's never going to end. <laughs> we can only, we only, to the moon, to the moon! So, I remember when the Overwatch League got announced, and, you know, I was like, yo, this isn't going to work. I remember ha having a party, I was at a party, and there were some Blizzard employees, and they were like saying, this is what we're going to do for the other one. I said, nah, that's fucked. <laughs> like, it ain't going to work. I, 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 could, I couldn't have been clearer on it. So that's, I'm just going to chill for eight minutes and just listen to this fucking godhead here on my screen, right, and see what, see what I've got to say. And then we're going to have a look at the news for today. Okay, well, let's do it then. Uh, let's be absolutely clear about why the Overwatch League exists. Okay, Blizzard have made a significant and amazing contribution to esports. No doubt about it. Accidentally, you see. That's the problem. They did it accidentally. I remember interviewing Blizzard employees where they've explicitly said, and this is as late as, like, I think 2012, they've explicitly said, we do not care about esports. If we make a great game first, and it happens to be a successful esport, great, but we do not care. But then esports took off and it made crazy amounts of money. So first they tried to fix StarCraft 2, which should have been, they, again, they had all the tools at their disposal. Should have been amazing, right? They should have done WCS format when it first came out. They didn't have the vision, so they didn't do it. They tried to throw money at the problem and region locking and all this. And everyone was like, you know what? I'm bored now. Sorry. We had a major event every weekend with the same casters every weekend, you know, and money just flying everywhere. And now people are bored of it. You, you, you're lost. Then I remember, because Blizzard used to like me, uh, and I remember talking to Blizzard employees, and they said, we're going to lock it down for Heroes of the Storm. I'm like, guys, okay, a few things. You're coming late to the MOBA party, just in case you don't know. Uh, and then second of all, like, you want to do a WCS format, which has just failed in one game, and you want to do it in a MOBA that isn't even a proper MOBA. And why do I say that? Because it was, uh, it's designed in a way where you really can't carry and not to the same degree you can in dota or league of legends it's kind of more team focused and they deliberately made that design choice let me tell you about esports fans i know a thing or two about them they like to follow the best players they don't care at, oh we're all the same on a team that's boring you don't want five clones who all play at the same ability you want a god who just come you want a dandy you know like you want somebody like this you know a faker right somebody who's just on a team and is just outrageous you know at that moment in time the player that wins you games you don't really have those names in heroes of the storm and because of that design choice i think it was hampered the fact it came late so they threw a bunch of money at that can, can we be honest about it it failed as an esport hey they even didn't put fundamental things in the game like you had to use a separate website to show the drafting system at home 
Hearthstone, accidental success again. Not an eSport, not eSports ready in any way, shape, or form. Took oh, off I'm because such it's a popular cunt. game that borrows from a popular IP in the form of World of Warcraft. Does it have a spectator client? Yeah, I don't think it does. How can you not make the... You had a replay system in StarCraft. You've actually actively gone backwards. So, okay. Blizzard have had a checkered history with eSports. But then when they saw it take off, they were like, wow, everyone's getting paid now. Christ, we kind of built this by accident, so we should get something out of it. And I know this because they one of the reasons they liked uh, the idea of the Activision Blizzard buying MLG was because it had a TV platform. Because they, I think when they saw Twitch go to Amazon for $970 million, they were like, our games help that. Do we get any? And Twitch are like, no, nah, of course not. This is our thing. Really happens. So they wanted a TV solution. They even had talks with Azuba at one point. I'm very glad for Blizzard they avoided that train wreck. That's an absolute dumpster fire. But, um, you know, they, they, they wanted MLG TV as a TV solution for Call of Duty and for whatever games they wanted to put out. They're not going to use it like that, I don't think. I think we're too far down the beaten path now. But then they really started flexing. And this is where Overwatch comes in. They've designed a game to have this populist appeal. I have no problem with that whatsoever. It's fine. But they've ignored some fundamental rules about esports. Class-based shooters do not do well as an esport. It's too much information. You have all the complexities of a MOBA with loads of different things happening and different visual abilities. First-person shooters must be simple to watch. You know, gun, crosshair, bullets, that's it. I need to know what the gun does by looking at the gun. I can't have like 50 different things shooting out the end of a gun and have to like follow the color of the bullets to know whether it's going to stun them or kill them. Or, what is this nonsense? The average fan can't grasp that. So it, it's a huge challenge. That's why it's never worked. So first of all, your game choice is outrageously stupid. <laughs> Second of all, has there ever been an eSport succeed that was forced? As an eSport. But anyone? No? no yeah, yeah, no takers. Because there hasn't been one. You can't force it. You have to organically build up a community. You have to make a really good game that people are engaged with and want to dedicate hours to. And the player base that I'm talking to from Overwatch, I'm talking to XTF2 players who are like, I'm here to make money. That's the pros, by the way. And the average casual player is just like, wow, the balance is all out of whack. You just killed this, kill it. You're changing things. The patches are coming too fast. None of us can keep up. Blizzard don't even know how to balance the game. People are bored. They're not having fun. Hours are going down. It is very much a casual experience. And again, I'm sorry, you cannot synthesize an eSport from that. So Blizzard have a lot to do just to get the game in shape. So all of that said, here's what we do. We, we are going to use the success of League of Legends. We're going to use the success of Dota's International, particularly, but and everything Valve have done in CSGO. And we are going to create a document, which I've read, uh, oh, the yes. Morgan Stanley document. This is legendary. If you can get your hands on it, you will... It, oh, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They're comparing esports like the WWE and stuff like this. You know, it's like, you know, how long has that been around for? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and, and they've literally duped We're going to be doing capital, something with that document uh, in the next companies. few days now that... We've got money to spend. You I expect you know, we're going to see the collapse of the league right? in the next it's week. Like they're placing a series of bets at a series of tables. They don't care because one of them will win. If you lose 60 mil but your one investment comes in and makes you 100 mil, it's all fair game. You've got the money to play with. Uh, and, and they've duped a bunch of people into sort of investing in it. I would not advise. I would not have advised it. I don't think it's a wise investment. I think dropping twenty million to have a slot in a league with no proof of concept, when you've got twenty thousand people watching the premier tournament that's being played right now, and you know, this is madness. And I've seen these bubbles before. They are dangerous because when people buy into stuff. And it, if it collapses, all of that money disappears, all of those jobs disappear, all of that investment disappears, and you won't see any of those people affected for a few years. So this is why I'm not resistant to it. I've said I actually want it to succeed just because of what the consequences will be if it does. Lying the whole time about that. Fuck everyone involved. Um, but everything about this is wrong. It's too expensive. The game isn't attracting a hardcore audience. Uh, the... 
Um, money is too much for startups. Again, I saw Hastra. I mean, he's out of his mind these days. He said uh, on Twitter, he's like going, oh, show me the viewing figures for the first year of League of Legends. Okay, I will. I didn't have to pay 20 million to get in that league. I just bought, you know, I just got a team and just paid them a low level salary in season one. That was all I had to do. Minimum investment. Hmm, it leads to growth. All right, okay. So this is insane. It's absolute insanity what's going on at the Overwatch League. And it's dangerous. I don't want massive venture capital firms, their first experience, getting burned for 20 mil. They're never coming back to this. So Blizzard have a huge responsibility on their shoulders, and I wish they could see a little bit further than just we want to get ours. I think that's really Back negative uh, for one of the major players in the esports industry. So, you know, am I on board with it? Absolutely not. Blizzard will certainly not involve me in any capacity with it at this point. Um, you know, they, they, I've already heard from people that they, they certainly think my attitude is unacceptable. Uh, but um, I care about esports. I don't care about Blizzard. You know, I care about the bigger picture. And I think, as it stands, the Overwatch League has the potential to be incredibly harmful and burn a bunch of people. And what about today, dickhead? It turns out, like, say that you will never be able to pull up an eight-minute uninterrupted off the dome clip that has aged as well as that. I don't give a fuck. Who it is. That's like some god tier shit. And also remember, Activision Blizzard, when they worked with E League, I weren't allowed on the I weren't allowed on the desk. I, they, had, they had Rachel Quirico host it. That's how pissed off they were about my outrageous opinions. Uh, all of which obviously have come to pass. So let's get to today. It's always good to check in with young Rich. It's always good to see what what was the world like back then. You know, I'll, uh, there's me by the way saying at the end of the interview, I care about esports. <laughs> That's the only thing that wasn't right in that fucking <laughs> in that bit because. Fuck it all, torch it all now, like bollocks to it. So, an article is released today, dickheads. Um, Activision Blizzard lays off esports staff as it faces potential dramatic changes for the Overwatch League. Amid layoffs in the Activision Blizzard esports department, Overwatch League franchise owners will vote on whether to continue the league in its current format. Right Now, this comes from, because as I've said many times in my videos, Activision Blizzard is obviously a public company. People own shares. And so the what they can't be like the rest uh, of the uh, esports companies out there and just lie. They have a public responsibility to not lie. And so you can see the report here. Amid the final days of the Activision Blizzard Microsoft deal, Activision Blizzard is laying off workers in its esports department while also preparing for potentially huge changes coming to the Overwatch League. Early today, Blizzard released its second quarter earnings report within which lies the potential fate of the overwatch league quote from the report is during the second quarter we amended terms of our collaborative arrangements with team entities participating in the overwatch league according to the amended terms following the conclusion of the current overwatch league season the teams will vote on an updated operating agreement if the teams do not vote to continue under an updated operating agreement a termination fee of six million will be payable to each participating team entity total fee of approximately 114 million now in plain english that means at the end of this season all of the team entities that participate in the league the orgs and they use the term entity because you know some are like conglomerate some are just like private ownership you know whatever they're gonna have a vote and the vote is, if you want to leave the league, you can do so with a $6 million parachute payment out of the league. So, let's think about this, right? We know for the following from previous reporting. We know that Activision Blizzard, only a few months ago, maybe, maybe two months ago, waived all future fees from the orgs in the league. They said, nah, it's all right. You don't owe us anything. 20 mil was a bit of a piss take. I think Jacob Wolf reported the number as out of, out of the total amount of money that they were meant to be getting from the buy-ins, 400 million remained unpaid and now will never be paid. So from the in original initial agreement, by the way, buying into this league for a fucking packet of crisps would have been a bad idea. But... From, so from the original supposed money raining from the sky franchise lot, Blizzard just 400 million in the hole instantly with that decision, right? So then 
What do we also know? Well, we also know no sponsors coming into the league because Activision Blizzard's reputation couldn't be worse. And Bobby Kotick has just done a media tour, by the way, where he went, oh, yeah, all them all them negative stories about us abusing women. I mean, by the way, oh, heartbreaking stuff, that woman who committed suicide after harassment, Bobby Kotick just out there, essentially desecrating her memory because he's saying none of this is real and it's unions that are, like, stalking this. Uh, I'd be outraged if I was that family man. Like, fuck that guy. Fuck him, he's a piece of shit. But anyway, he's just done a media tour that basically just means, like, no sponsors coming back to the fucking Overwatch League. No one. They're toxic. I, I never use that word, but this is what the word toxic is for. It's not being a dickhead in a video game. It is when your brand is so poisonous, nobody can stand to be near it because it would kill them too. That's what Activision Blizzard have fucking managed to create. You know, headlines like the Cosby Suite and the fucking stealing a breast milk, employees putting cameras in the women's toilets laying off staff to then re-advertise their jobs with reduced salary and benefits it's ridiculous it's a disgrace what activision blizzard has been allowed to get away with for all these years and as i said for someone who stood there and planted my flag and fought the good fight against riot for years alone when nobody else did it because everybody is just a bag chaser I say now, out of the two great, the great evil companies that have come in and polluted esports with their garbage, Activision Blizzard is the worst. It's worse than Riot Games. It's worse than ten cent owned Riot Games. Go figure. The other thing that we know from recent reporting, they fucked up the deal in China with the whole NetEase argument. And so the game isn't even being distributed in China. And there's six Chinese teams, one of which was owned by fucking netties. How can you operate a league like this? And the other thing we know from reporting, when people tried to sound out and sell slots in the Overwatch League, they couldn't do it. Nobody would buy it, not for a fraction of what they paid, not for a million dollars. They couldn't sell them. Chengdu Hunters just pieced out. They said, fuck it, we can't do this anymore. And I've seen so much, uh, like, so much talk, even from people in Overwatch. Like, I sat down and watched Plat Chat today, right? And I was in the chat answering questions. Weirdly, I was expecting, like, Overwatch fans tell me to fuck off and abuse me. Loads of them saying, ah, we owe, we owe you an apology, like. <laughs> like, oh, it's fine. Listen, never apologize on behalf of the crazies. So, anyway, people don't realize how much money went into running these teams. You have to get a team. You have to pay them a competitive salary. And at the start, all these moronic, typically American, esports owners paid money they didn't have to pay. Pissed it up against the wall because they just wanted to be the best and win something. So they could say to their VC investors, but look, we are winning. It is working. We have built a talent pipeline. Oh, my, we are the best. And they said, oh, my God, don't know what owner pixels got to do with it. But anyway, that's what they wanted, right? That was what they wanted to do. And so they jacked up the price, the salaries, everything they had to. Keep in mind, the league already had a fucking minimum salary requirement within it and you had to have subs again contractual obligation to participate in the league right and all of the players were represented by agencies typically one agency because the whole thing was a corrupt sewer but whatever and so there was tons of money then because of their demented plan to have it where everyone was traveling all over the world every week and they got rid of their studio in Burbank in California everybody had to rent a premises everyone had to have a venue that they could use for their games and their games sorry their venues had to be able to host Blizzard's production team so when you were the home team and they wanted to run a broadcast of your game Blizzard had to be able to get in so they had to have a venue they had to have a a venue with extra rooms they had to have equipment oh, by the way the orgs are all underwriting this cost right then <laughs> okay then we have the pandemic and, and people wanted to have a brexit on the league then and by the way when people say it was the pandemic that killed overwatch 
Wrong, dickhead. The pandemic extended the lifespan of Overwatch because they got to pivot, make a cheaper show, and the government paid the orgs to have an Overwatch team because of the PPP fucking scams that were going on. And when the Overwatch League went, when all the teams in the Overwatch League went to Blizzard and said, we need more money to survive during the pandemic or we're pieced out, Blizzard helped them negotiate the paperwork to be able to get ppp loans there was a ton of orgs did this in uh, in esports so they extended the lifespan of it plus they didn't have to do that ridiculous homestand model that would have killed the league in a year it would have killed it stone dead people would have been this is unsustainable players would have lost their minds they would have actually physically burnt out before your eyes the schedule was insane the original schedule so we now end up at this point right so take all of that into account how much money you think these orgs have dropped into having an overwatch team for all this time for a league that peaked on day one in viewership and don't worry i'll be writing an article about it see i'm coming in hot with these articles, right? I'm going to be writing an article about this because I remember all these esports grifters on day one when 460,000 people just came out to see if it was a car crash or not. Zero interest in sticking around or spending any money, right? Or everyone was going, wow, they've really proven that they've got something here. I remember one quote, um, can't remember who it was, but someone important, and they said, this proves Overwatch esports is real. Then the next day, the numbers went down, and the next day, the numbers went down, and the next day, the numbers went down, and everyone's going, yeah, but these are still good numbers. I mean, we were always going to have the, the biggest numbers on tier one, but then these numbers are going to grow, and it's been going down ever since. It's been going down ever since. It never got even close to that height again. Doesn't matter. And, and everyone just forgets, Blizzard were essentially viewbotting their own shit at this time and they were doing it with permission from twitch richard these hyperbolic statements you make no no no. i can say these things because it's true and here's how here's what i mean right twitch owned curse remember how they bought curse curse used to offer you a service where they would because they owned this huge portfolio of websites they would embed your streams on like wikis so i'm looking up how, like, oh, I'm playing Invoker, how do I counter him? I'm on that, and in the top corner, like you've probably seen on this stream, there's a video playing, and it's not a video, it's a stream. And I now count as a fucking... Uh, like, I watched... I watched that stream now, apparently, according to the numbers. No, I didn't. I was never a viewer. I didn't even know it was on. Not to mention, they were putting it on Battle.net <laughs> and running it idle on battle.net and then everyone was going no, i actually know these numbers don't count and then cecilia de anastasia you know put a fucking report saying no these numbers do count and then everything just and then it just quietly stopped despite the fact they were denying they were doing anything wrong in the first place and then twitch sold curse hmm. very strange it's almost as if twitch were invested in it being a success after paying 90 million dollars for it this industry is bent guys it is bent from the top to the bottom. So, anyway, knowing all of that, right, do you think they will ever get a better offer than six million? <laughs> six, six million? Six million to, to fuck off? I mean, I, I even posted the meme. I don't even watch the show, but it was too perfect. It's I'm going to pay you six million to fuck off. <laughs> trailer park boys it's just it's too it's too perfect like the league is so bad they're being paid six million to just go away and stop like you have to understand by the way that will come with caveats this is just my own intuition although i'm sure i've already talked to some people involved in this stuff and the general tenet is everyone's gonna take the money they are fully expecting that the they're gonna vote out of the league at the end of the season i haven't talked to anyone who says their rogs gonna vote the other way yet but anyway you have to understand like how insane it is to go from a league where you are literally saying to people 20 mil to buy in because this stuff's like you know and Here's another little detail everyone's forgotten. Back when the Overwatch League did the original pitch, loads of endemic esports orgs, like I think Misfits and Echo Fox, stuff like that, they were told they weren't good enough to buy a slot. Bobby Kotick didn't want them in. 
He didn't want any of the endemics. He was very snooty about it. They pitched to every major sports org in the world. The Cronkies, people like this. That's who they wanted. When they couldn't sell all the slots to those guys, because, you know, the VC groups did some consulting and actually figured it was a bad investment. I did reporting around this. They then came to those same esports orgs and said, all right, we can get you in. And some orgs took that took that opp opportunity and ended up getting these slots. We're now at a point where the league is so terribly run and with Microsoft potentially coming in, right? So a complete new vision for esports. They're paying you six million to fuck off. I, like, I, I can't tell you how much of a one it. Like, to say I'm vindicated is the understatement of all time. And in that six million, there will be an agreement not to litigate because you were sold a fucking lemon, team owners. You were sold pie in the sky bullshit. I'm going to take the choice cuts from that Morgan Stanley document. By the way, Morgan Stanley happened to own pieces of Activision Blizzard and then made a document saying investing in this esports thing for 20 million is a sick idea. <laughs> what, you know, it, it's, it's just nonsense. It's just like, it's a layer cake of corruption and lies and bullshit. And we're all just stood there. This industry is great. So I'm going to cut out the choice bits of it because no one's ever seen it publicly. Everyone got scared because basically it says in the document, this is the, or this belongs to Morgan Stanley and any recre any distribution or recreation of this document can be acted upon. Oh, whatever, fucking act on me then. I'm so bored of this shit. The stuff that gets hit behind the scenes because everyone's just a fucking coward it's all right my turn again i guess so we'll put it out and you can look at how absurd these fucking numbers are for yourselves you can see it with your own eyes because put it this way all you people who complain about nfts and crypto and say that's a ponzi scheme you're right but you'll never see nothing like this this is the biggest load of bullshit this is the biggest load of bullshit and they can get away with saying it because hey it was just speculation Anyway, we'll scroll on and, and read the rest of the piece. Uh, this means the fate of the league after the current season is now in the hands of team owners to be voted on sometime later this year. Though we do not know what the franchise owners will decide based on the shaky financial and team developments of the last few years, we can make an educated guess. It talks about the licensing agreement down here, the eSports winter. Somehow, the Overwatch League has said... Uh, we're going to continue in some capacity. We're, 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 here it is. Here's the quote. I want to be clear on one. This was an interview with Deserto, I think. Uh, I want to be clear on one thing in particular. Overwatch remains committed to a competitive ecosystem in 2024 and beyond. And we're building towards a revitalized global scene that prioritizes uh, players and fans. Uh, but anyway, the problem is... They made layoffs. Yesterday, the company's esports department suffered layoffs, impacting 50 employees. Now, again, we know from previous reporting, they made another layoff where I think it was like 80 was the number, but 70 or 80 in the esports department. And they were calling that a skeleton crew because they're fully expecting Microsoft to come in, put different people in uh, different heads. They, they, they don't even trust themselves to run these events anymore. They just want to keep it spinning and go, back to developing the game and putting content in the game and so they're going to come back to the third party tournament operators they treated like garbage they literally spat in the face of companies like esl and mlg and e-league and all literally a, fuck you peasant that's what they were like right you you can't have a piece of overwatch and now they're going back to it to basically say will you run tournaments for us so they're going to completely rely on, you know, probably ESL. And so, by the way, get ready for the most delicious thing of all. Oh, I'm so ready for this. So, so ready. I didn't say anything about the FGC because they're all nutters and weirdos. And so I can't be bothered with more death threats. But I didn't notice the FGC who said I was evil and right-wing and all these other things that I'm not. They didn't want me at their events, and they were willing to kill me to not have me at their events. Uh, some of them, certainly, in very, very real terms. They just went to Gamers 8, and uh, they just had a massive event out there, and, every, and all the FGC who love diversity and inclusiveness, and we're the most diverse and inclusive eSport, just all loving it, just love Saudi money. No one got any opinions about it, no one got any opinions about it, right? So, nah, fine, I guess. 
fine. Probably not a surprise, considering, you know, remember the evil where women just got roofied and one woman, like, nearly literally just got dragged back to a room and all them sex offenders got outed. So, you know, maybe, maybe uh, probably not the great female protectorate scene uh, in, in the esports space, actually. But anyway, here's the fucking bit right overwatch which i said what was who was overwatch made for guys overwatch wasn't made for esports fans it was made to try and convert tumblr sex weirdo refugees into esports fans that's what it was for that was all that, that i don't know why they thought that was going to work but they tried it right that was it and so they 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 did it and everybody who came in went this is the glock looks a glorious space and you know oh stop make trace's bum smaller tracer can't have a big bum it encourages the male gaze and by the way uh we've just had 10 scandals so now she's a lesbian and just on and on and on it go we've had another scandal uh, deploy the gay <laughs> soldier 76 is gay now deal with it um he's not gay in russia he's not gay in turkey He's not gay in China, he's gay, but he's gay here. Right, fucking hell. All right, Blizzard, mate. So anyway, they did that. It, you, know, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that scene, that cosign to all that bullshit is going to be having Saudi events very, very soon. And I will be there. I will be like brick top. You're on thin fucking ice, Overwatch, and I'll be waiting for you under it when it breaks. Fucking believe it. Every single person who ever, ever, ever came to the LGBT for clout. I'll be there. Remember, I'm in the Alphabet Club. I get to do this, I guess. It may, it's, a, it's a one time I'm going to play the card. I'll fucking do All right, let's go along then, right? I'm in that club. I get to say it. So I will be getting every single one of your names and i will be putting up the tweets next to the statements about you participating in those events in saudi and all the fans are gonna be there well i mean at least it, it, it at least it um, keeps overwatch alive all of your gay characters aren't gay in saudi not gay in riyadh you'll notice good luck with that Good luck with trying to make that one work. The cognitive dissonance is going to bring you to your knees. And it's no, no, no less than Overwatch deserves. So anyway, this is the bit I wanted to read to you. We can put the grandstand in aside for a moment. So... The 50 layoffs, here's the statement about it. Blizzard said, we remain committed to the future of esports and we regularly assess how our staffing aligns with our business goals to ensure we can evolve with changing trends and best deliver for our teams, players and fans. As always, supporting our employees through transitions is our top priority. Then, people who got laid off anonymously told The Verge, there was no warning. This was a complete shock to everyone and none of us who were laid off were offered any opportunity opportunity to switch roles or teams the former employee worked in esports operations and had the perception that everything within the department was going well <laughs> oh really not been on twitter today have you not all right okay not not been, not been looking out the window the team had obviously shrunk over the last few years and esports as a whole has been struggling lately but we were seeing record viewership and lucrative sponsorship deals for our call of duty league tournaments yeah, yeah, the other league, yeah. Overwatch League didn't seem quite as successful from a viewership perspective, but we saw more success than ever with our Overwatch League skins and our side leagues, like Calling All Heroes. The former employee shared that Blizzard was sunsetting some of the tools used to run its tournaments, and that, before being let go, they were working on a new tool to replace those being shut down. As far as I know, that tool is still, being, is still planned to be terminated in the coming weeks, and our replacement wasn't fixed finished so i can only speculate that division blizzard is closing its esports division they may be able to keep a skeleton crew on to close out the overwatch league in the world series of warzone seasons in the next few months but in my eyes they are completely unequipped to internally support anything esports after that it's not just over for overwatch <laughs> blizzard are done they're done because they didn't listen to a young handsome wise man all those years ago on multiple fronts I tried to help them with Heroes of the Storm, they didn't listen. I tried to help them with StarCraft, they didn't listen. Tried to help them with Overwatch, they didn't listen. I've been right about it all. I know the business. They could have just listened, they could, and they could have had a W. 
And instead, you know, I saw today the tweets. Everyone's going to gloat about the collapse of the Overwatch League. I think it was Adam Apicella, right? Which, fair enough, he used to be part of the, you know, Activision Blizzard Empire when they bought MLG. So I get you. I get why he's saying it. But he said, um, when everyone is gloating, remember, good people lost their jobs today. Controversial take about to come in. Three, two, one... Sorry, I, I, when you work for companies like Blizzard and Riot, I've seen you on the road. I don't care if you're, like, fundamentally a good person, good at your job, don't deserve to lose it, lose your job, while Bobby Court, it keeps his job. You act like cult members. You go to eSports events, you come into my space and act arrogantly with conceit. You look down on people in the eSports space. You are gossipy. You know, they're, they're, they're pathetic. They all come in their little, you know, uniforms and, uh, hi, uh, Activision Blizzard staff member coming through. Yes, actually, I work in the uh, uh, graphic design department and it's pathetic. Like, so, you know what? I'm just telling you, get deprogrammed and go get a real job. Like, there you go. I lost my job. I lost my job in eSports winter. I said to dessert, oh, it's not viable to keep me on. Let's just part ways. Let's go. I went out there into the big wide world. I'm doing all right. Why am I doing all right? Oh, yeah, I offer something of value. So if you offer something of value, don't worry. The market will be fine for you. You, you will be fine. And you won't have to be part of a cult that has on its record abuses of women, abuses of staff members, anti-union practices. You'll feel much better, actually, I think. I think you'll feel much better. So no, I'm not... I'm not going to fucking, you know, oh, it's so sad. It's not sad, actually. It's sad. And Generally, games, develop, games development staff are fucking weirdos. <laughs> I've met enough of them. So, you know, prove me wrong. You know, prove me wrong. But I'm sick of you. So, whatever. In, in, enjoy, the, enjoy the unemployment line that you've wished on me a million times every time I wrote a story about you. Enjoy it. It's great. Get back to that gruel. Yeah, not me. Gonna put on some more pounds. I might just, I might, I might go, I might go two eighty, just so I can feel what it's like to be Tony Soprano. Yeah, you, you, you enjoy your, you enjoy your thin stew. Anyway, the final quote is: I can't really fathom what the benefit is to lay people off when your company is posting record profits. I know, and your stock price is quite literally capping out with a looming acquisition. This move isn't helping the shareholders. It's not helping the business, and it's not helping the remaining employees. You have to understand. So first of all, the Activision Blizzard way of thinking about esports has been completely and utterly destroyed. They were wrong from the start. They've been proven repeatedly wrong. They have made error after error after error, and it's not sustainable anymore. And so they've laid everybody off, and they're just like, please, people who know esports, can you do it? It is utter failure. It is utter, utter failure. And then you go, well, at least Overwatch will be okay. Uh, well, <laughs> well, itty, well, itty, well, itty. Six million to get out and not have a league, but at least the game is going to be okay. Is it though? Q reports from IGN, from cobbled from the same financial report, Activision Blizzard admits the engagement and player investment in Overwatch 2 is declining. <laughs> what? What this? No, but this had a huge cultural impact. People were doing that dance and singing. Maybe I'll be Trace. Remember that? You, you've, you, I go everywhere I go. I see Overwatch. I, I can't walk out my door without. Oh, it's. I don't even know any of the names. It's Junk Rat. Is he one? It, junk Rat. Look at that. It's a Junk Rat decal on a car. Is, is it him? That's a hit. See, he's done it. I don't even know the hit. Yeah. Ooh. It's so good. There's a hamster. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> this game is so shit. It's so whack. It's like so fucking whack. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just read you, for, I'll read you the report. I don't want to bring IGN up on screen because it's pop-up ad hell. But here it is. Overwatch 2 engagement and player investment is declining, Activision Blizzard admits. Here's the quote uh, while engagement and player investment in overwatch 2 declined sequentially in the quarter the overwatch team is looking forward to the august 10th release of overwatch 2 invasion the publisher wrote in its earnings report this will be the largest seasonal update yet planned to include new pve story missions a new game mode and new hero progression system as well as an additional 
hero. Now, one thing just to also uh, tag tag on was you remember you remember how like when Overwatch Two came out, it was going to save the entire scene, and everyone was really into the idea of PVE component to the game. And then they said there's not going to be any PvE content and we're going to scrap the whole reason for Overwatch 2's existence. Thanks very much for giving us more money you didn't have to pay when we promised we wouldn't shut off Overwatch. And then we did. We said there'd be cross-version play. There isn't. <laughs> you just you just ha have to have Overwatch 2. So not a problem. Then they took that PvE content and paywalled it and are charging $15 for the PVE content they already made. <laughs> like, it is appropriate that you're a bunch of, if you're an Overwatch fan, you are a Tumblr sex weirdo, because you have been cooked, my friend. You've been cuckolded. You're in the closet. Can I have the content, Blizzards? Yeah, in a minute. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. You bought a game to get the thing they took away. None of the promises delivered. Uh, then, you know, well, at least we'll get all this sick PvE content. No, you're not getting that. Oh, well, at least I've still got this sick game. Now, oh, by the way, you know that content that we said you can't have? We, uh, we've actually got it, and we're going to sell it to you for $15. Go on, then, Blizzard. It's you, like... You, you are... You've done this to yourselves, Overwatch fans. Like, I can't stress enough... You have accepted some of the most predatory practices left in the industry because loot boxes are getting skimmed out. Three battle passes on launch day, by the way, for, for things like fucking Diablo, right? You're, you're getting wrecked by Activision Blizzard and you're saying, yeah, give me, wreck me harder, <laughs> Blizzard daddy. <laughs> it's mental. I've never seen anything like it. It's actually insane. So, negative headlines about the game. Negative headlines about the eSport. It is it is already dead. It's like uh, Fist of the North Star. Like, it, <laughs> the announcement was... What? And then it's like, ha you're already dead. Because they're going to take that six mil and they're going to go. It's over, right? So, just enjoy it while, while it was here. But anyway, you're like, well, surely Blizzard's bringing its PC games to steam <laughs> they're not even battlenet exclusives anymore there's a steam page for overwatch 2 <laughs> so you're going no 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 right so okay let's 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 have a look at that right that's good right it's a good thing okay well yeah it is a good thing because now we know the esports league is fucked the game people aren't even playing it anymore and one thing i, I, I haven't seen a lot of people pick up on this point this is probably the way they get round the Chinese problem. Because remember, they cannot sell the game in China on Battle.net because they lost the NetEase distributor. But Steam already has a Chinese government-approved version of Steam, and it wasn't, net, it wasn't beef with Activision Blizzard itself or the game's content that they found objectionable. It was the deal they had with NetEase had gone, and to sell things in China, one must have a Chinese business as a partner. So I'm thinking, this is just me, I could be wrong on this, by the way. I haven't had time to look into it before the stream. It's all happened so quick today. They found a way to get their games being sold in China again, but Valve are going to be taking their cut. That's how fucked Blizzard is as a company. They couldn't even, they fucked up in China so bad, they couldn't even get another Chinese company to distribute their games. And they've had to go to one of their biggest rivals, sell their games on their platform, while Valve are taking a piece of that. They're taking 30% off the top of that. Like, I'll be having that Activision Blizzard. And that's just so they can get into the Chinese market again because of how bad they fucked it up. That's what I think's gone down, right? So if that turns out to be wrong and the games still aren't being sold in China or they're looking for a separate distribution deal i'll take the l but that's my that's my 100 percent. i'm like totally convinced that's what's driven this but anyway regardless of that even if that is wrong them having to admit that 
There's so little interest in our games. We have to sell on a rival's platform. And yeah, it probably isn't 30% they take for a big developer like that. It is such an utter defeat. It is such an utter defeat in the marketplace, right? Because remember how it was all Battle.net. Activision Blizzard's conceptualization for media was this. They wanted their own distribution platform. They wanted their own streaming company at one point. They wanted their own production company. They want their... They, they want their... Uh, games and esports products and all of those add-ons to be in one place hermetically sealed that you have to go to. And now, slowly but surely, that's been unravel unraveling. Started with Call of Duty being on Steam and stuff like this. But for Blizzard games to not be exclusive to Battle.net is insane. It is so insane. I can't stress it enough. And so... They've been defeated in esports, defeated in China, defeated in the marketplace. Like, I don't know what to tell you. They couldn't have shit the bed. Like, they have shit so much in this bed. There is less bed than shit. It's crazy how badly they have fucked up. So, there is no point in even having an eSport for Overwatch anymore. But, we'll talk a little bit about that now, as I said we would. So, I want to remind everybody that one of the things that happened back at the start of the game, which, had they not done this, it would have been much better off. But, nah. What they did was, they told people who wanted to host Overwatch tournaments that they had to agree to certain rules. And some of these rules were overreach, but normal. One of the things, by the way, for Activision uh, Blizzard was f that you have to agree that the aesthetic of the broadcast is acceptable to them. For a lot of third parties, that meant they approve, like, your overlay. The worst example was if you ran a tournament for fucking Hearthstone, you had to have all that stupid pretend tavern furniture like at the event that that was a legit requirement for that's why like that esgn that went under had to do it i remember when i was working at wsoe we're like it's vegas poker it's cards like let us do some sick shit and they said no nah, you've got to take the you got to take the tavern i mean we will we'll give you the shit you set it up in your studio you do the green screen you, you have you have the, the the tavern and i said like nah no. but then we said well what if we did a women's tournament and they went oh well for the women you can just do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> nice activision blizzard so we did that that like those two hearthstone tournaments we did at wsoe for the women were fucking sick by the way like they were really really good sick content sick production value you know we had a guy producing that show who directed a fucking super bowl when he was at fox sports so you know it was on point. Anyway, we, we got to do, like, some fucking cool shit. Uh, but that was, like, the nonsense. And so, because Overwatch was the... And by the way, I don't know if that was a permanent requirement that they stuck with. I'm just talking about my experiences. And I've seen tournaments that don't have that shit now, for sure. So, whatever. I mean, not that anyone gives a fuck. Cause they've just rustled it away on YouTube. So, you know, as part of the fucking Call of Duty League deal. You know, Hearthstone Esports is dead. But anyway, the other thing they wanted to do for overwatch was complete veto on all the overlays and they were telling tournament operators you can't have statistics we own the statistics because when we do our league which was always coming when we do our league we want to have exclusive dominion over the stats we so you can't use stats so that was out they also said it like and i don't even i can't remember the verbiage the wording of it in the contract but it's pretty much explicit they said you can't do anything that might overshadow our league so if your pitch was like let's do this super sick event we're gonna take it to a stadium we're gonna have a fucking pyrotechnics just no, can't do any of that because if it looks if your event looks any better than what our league is gonna look like then f we're not going to let you do it because the league is going to be the home of Overwatch. So in the end, all the tournament operators turned around and said, you're not really leaving us a lot of leeway. The final insult was if you ran a Blizzard tournament, the thing you had to agree to, and again, I heard this from multiple tournament operating staff, was the thing you had to agree to was having at least two Blizzard esports people in your production truck telling you what to do at all times. So it's not your show. 
and trust. Even though I wasn't even allowed in my own fucking studio. I wasn't allowed in the studio when the E-League was filming there. Because they were like, Richard Lewis could disrupt you know blizzard so i was just chilling they just they just gave me a holiday there was like uh, there was stuff like that we had uh, you know that got put in place for e-league and by the way e-league was a sick uh sick launch for overwatch it looked really good i think much better than their fucking studio but whatever they were happy with it so that was the type of shit you had to agree to back then everyone now is going to be a little bit like well i remember when you i remember when we needed overwatch and you wouldn't let us do all this shit, and you wanted your people, and that, now Blizzard are just like, have it. So what's going to happen is, they're going to say it like, all of these fucking people, like, look, please just run our tournaments, just give Overwatch fans something to watch, something to think about, and then we'll come back w when the Microsoft takeover's done, and we'll talk, right? So basically, what what'll end up happening is, you're going to get, you, like one or two little pop-up tournaments just to just to keep it warm you know just keep the embers going and esl will do one and they'll probably do it in Riyadh, and they'll do some american events probably through vindex and all of that stuff that's all coming but ultimately it's get these are going you're not going to have a league it's going to be like one-off tournaments it's going to be like weekend tournaments it's going to be like normal esports you know it's not going to be franchise slots and so it's going to be interesting because how this is going to impact on the esports economy is do you even want to keep an overwatch team and also by the way spoiler with south korea being like the dominant players in overwatch it's really expensive and awkward to kind of have a team particularly if you're no longer want to have an operational uh, a base of operations in south korea so you know china's an option but you know only if the game is distributed again out there so there's lots of problems that are going to happen and i think ultimately what you're going to end up with is it's going to become like a tier three like esport like a lot of borderline like semi-professional players on low salaries because it's not going to be a league mandate it's minimum anymore and you know you're just going out to one or two events keep in mind as well all of those team names you love they disappear overnight when the league goes under that you know there won't be any more london spitfire activision blizzard owns the right to the intellectual property so you're gonna have to start so it would be you know like cloud nine for example it would be like a, the cloud nine overwatch team and then how many you know how many people are fans of that we don't really know so yeah you're gonna get these like small little pop-up tournaments but overwatch is set to go the way of hearthstone like that's my prediction and so, you know, uh, I can't really see another way unless Saudi wants to underwrite a similar model to the Overwatch League with new, like, na with just no franchise names, no actual franchising, and make it like a partnered league, but with no buy-in. But I just can't see that. And also, historically, when the Microsoft takeover happens, Microsoft, when they conceptualize what an esports event is they like one time event. you know, think halo they want one time events big spectacle people coming together big prize pool every three months that's what they want so and that's how they've done things so you might get that for overwatch but it's all so dependent on how popular the game can stay how popular the fucking scene can be and it just i don't know just ain't feeling it i ain't feeling it but anyway don't worry i did catch some pretty good corp today uh so we'll just share that we'll end the video with a bit of a bit of core wouldn't be an overwatch scene uh if it we didn't have some overwatch corp this was a good one when i was watching plat chat somebody put this on youtube i'm pretty sure they have it all backwards the termination fee is to be paid by the teams leaving six million to get out uh not to the teams and then he put that if the teams do not vote to continue under an operating agreement a termination fee of six million will be payable to each participating team entity so i don't know i don't know what he thought was going on there uh but it it wasn't going on there was also this there's a great thread on competitive overwatch you'll obviously recognize they used to downvote all my content the same like 12 lunatics like that guy called hobo tripping he's in every thread just i just live in his head rent free i don't know why he is tripping he may or may not be a hobo i don't know but anyway he and others like him have shit on me for like ages just because i'm right and i did see a comment that i thought was so good just so in line 
with the cope. It was this. Here it is. People have always overreacted saying Overwatch League is dying slash dead from the very start. But this may actually be the end. Shit, lol. So in other words, they were right the whole time until today. <laughs> until today, dickhead. They were right the whole time. All the people saying it was a bad idea were wrong, were wrong, were wrong, were wrong, were wrong, were wrong. And now, and now we're right. We only get to be right now. And I'm sure you're going to see lots of this as well, where people are going to be like, well, of course he was right. He said it was going to fail every year, but the league started in 2017, and look how long it lasted. It's 2023 now. No, I was right the whole time. It has absolutely struggled and been propped up to exist. And as I said, extended by the pandemic, not killed by it, extended. So can someone explain the reasoning behind the Blizzard payout? Uh, I have no idea what the financials look like, but so far I feel like most of the news we heard has been that the teams aren't profitable. <laughs> Correct? Obviously, it's probably safe to assume that Blizzard isn't making much, if at all, but are they really losing so much money they'll blow $140 million to get themselves out? Right, so this is a dude that just doesn't understand the economics. Blizzard cannot lose money on the overwatch league because they own the overwatch ip so they have made the game and every bit of money that the game makes they keep they do deals as well with leagues uh, sorry teams in the league where they sell skins and take the lion's share of the profit from that they have the loot crates the battle pa they cannot lose money on this so the only thing they can lose money on is the specific construction of the league itself. So you have to understand that East, right, there, basically there's this huge enterprise behind the little mom and pop stand of the esports component of any game. And the games developer are making money hand over fist. So, yes, to put this product to bed. To get themselves away from potential litigate, I'm sure, by the way, th that we there's a story we're all missing. Because what they hire a law firm, and they that, but that law firm is just for communication, but it represents all of the owners, and they specialise in tech and media. All of a sudden, Activision Blizzard say those owners don't have to pay any more fees. All of a sudden, in fact, they're getting six mil back. Yeah, for real. Like, for real. Something has gone on here, and the threat of litigation has resulted in this. This is, this is what they're communicating about. I'd bet dollars to donuts on that one. I guess it would also depend on how many years the agreement would renew for. Maybe if it's another five or six years, I could see how in total the losses could exceed the payout. This is very likely corp. <laughs> I'll say, dudes, yes, it's that bad. The league is that bad, has been that bad. This was more disastrous than CGS. CGS blew through 60 million in two and a half years this is a disaster it is unprecedented in esports there will be case studies in this not just in esports in business <laughs> about how bad it is right like seriously this is a problem just compare <laughs> like say cgs 60 million two and a half years events at the playboy mansion that didn't need to happen nobody wanted to buy in nobody wanted to invest in then we have the subprime mortgage crisis and everything goes away this they forego the right to get 400 million <laughs> just initially and now they're paying 140 million back on top of that not to mention just the general running costs that led to them shutting down the studio because they would just operate in a studio and having talent in one of the most expensive places to live in the world just ridiculous so i might cobble together some writing i'm on my travels uh in august i might start writing up see what comes out might start writing about the overwatch league interview a few people write a book about it or at least an extended series of articles for the Substack. i don't know but trust me like th this is a, a fucking disaster so it is over i mean essentially the overwatch league is done Overwatch as a game is looking done. I will have I, I'll be very keen to see the Steam numbers and see where it gets to. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't see how the league survives 
this. I don't see how the league survives when the stakeholders can earn six million, particularly in this esports economy, to walk away. And I imagine very soon. Uh, what date does the season end? October the first, apparently. So I mean, basically after October first, that's that. I mean, there's going to be an announcement very shortly after that that they're taking the money and and running, and all those little entities that we treated as if they were real are going to be exposed as the illusions that they always were. And so that's that. That is the end of the Overwatch League. It's been real. We hardly knew ye.